everyone. In my previous uh, videos, I've touched upon UI automation and I demonstrated how it can be used to interact with the navigation pane and access. Um, today I thought I'd look at it again, but how we can use it to interact a little bit with the ribbon. So I'm going to start off simple today, which is just going to be how can we determine the state of the ribbon? Is it maximized or expanded? or is it minimized, collapsed? And then how can we change the current state? How can we expand it if we want to expand it, or how can we minimize it to give more room on the uh, MIDI client area for working? So that's what I'm going to cover today. And um, in another video, then we're going to start looking into how can we start actually interacting with it in the sense of uh, clicking specific command buttons, uh, opening the file menu, things like that. So let's dig in. Before delving into the matter itself, I just want to point out one thing. My previous discussion on uh, the UI automation of the navigation pane, now that's obviously access specific. The navigation pane is an access element. But what we're discussing today is the ribbon, and the ribbon is integrated throughout Office. And the code you're going to see here is pure VBA and um, UI automation, yes, but it's portable. So you can use it in Excel, in Word, whatever you'd like. There's no issue there. Uh, there's a single line of code that needs to change. We're going to look at that at the appropriate time. And I'll then show you a demonstration also in Excel uh, in highlight the line that needs to change, but just to show that it is completely portable and works perfectly fine. So let's start off with my blog articles because that's where you're going to find all this information. You're going to find the functions. They're very easy. They're not very complex. Um, and I've split them into two articles. Why two? Well, the first article is how do we determine the current state? So how do we determine if the ribbon is currently expanded or collapsed? And this actually was the toughest part of the entire puzzle to put together. Um, I go back to a question that I got uh, on my YouTube video regarding the nav pane. And I was asked if there was a way that, to collapse and expand object groupings within the navigation pane. And I managed to solve that quite easily. And if I just come here for a second, you can see that I managed to do it because I was able to come here and pull a property that tells me expanded or collapsed. And with that property, I was instantaneously able to determine the state of that element. Is it expanded or collapsed? And then act accordingly. So it was very easy. However, the ribbon doesn't expose such a property. I even contacted the Access Dev team for uh, an inquiry on the matter to see if I was missing something. And I was informed that no, uh, nothing had been exposed. Um, so I went about my way and I eventually found a solution. It took me several hours of trying all sorts of different things. But quite simply, the ribbon is uh, displayed in uh, two sections, basically two elements. You have an upper, which I guess would be the tabs themselves, and then the lower, which is the ribbon content, which is your groupings and buttons and things like that. And what I ended up doing quite simply was I come here and I simply try to bind to the lower section where the buttons are displayed. If it isn't visible, well, then it's collapsed. If it's visible, well, then it's expanded. So the end solution is very simple and elegant, but it took quite a, a lot of trial and error and all sorts of convoluted tests to eventually uh, get to this point. So I know it seems simple, but it isn't when, you know, I had been counting on a simple property in reality, and none exists for the ribbon. So that's the uh, ribbon is expanded. We're going to look at it, test it out, you'll see. And it relies on one helper function. And then the second blog entry is how do we then change the state? So we're able to determine if it's expanded or collapsed. How do I change it now? And that once again isn't horrifically complex. 
it all comes down to one single command and it's not even a UI automation command. So we're going to use our previous function that we had, the UI ribbon expanded here, yes, to know the current state, to know if we have to apply the function, uh, but it's just a standard command bar command. So let's dive in, let's look at it in, in real life, in, in real time usage. So I have two modules, very straightforward. The first module contains my self-healing variable, which you're all familiar with by now. And it has my helper function. And the helper function just basically allows me to locate an element within the UI. And that's what it does. I pass it the name of an element in its class, and it's going to go and find it. Find first. It's going to find that element and return it back to me so I can work with it. So if we come here and we look at the is expanded, what am I telling it? I'm telling it first go bind to access. Find find this ver this instance of access so we can work with it. Then I use that find to go find the lower ribbon of this class and I try to bind to it. I try to set it. Now, if it doesn't set, it's because the lower region isn't visible. Therefore, it's collapsed. So I'm able to return here is expanded as false. If it does bind to it, so it isn't nothing. In that case, it means it's displaying. Therefore, it's expanded. So is expanded true. So it's very simple at the end of the day. There you have it. I've left the code here at the top where you'll see I've commented out these lines. But if you don't want to use self-healing variables, you can just uncomment them. But as you're going to see, if I just push this window to the right and push this one to the left, we can now come here and very easily determine, is it expanded? Yes, it is. And if I minimize it for a second, is it expanded? No, it is not. So that is the is expanded, ribbon is expanded function. Now let's look at the second function, which is the ribbon expand. So we're going to tell it here, it's got an input argument of B expand, it's a Boolean. Do you want it expanded, yes or no? So yes, if you look here, true, it means expand the ribbon. If you put false, then it means collapse the ribbon. So quite simply, we come here. We're going to take a look at the current state. So is it expanded or not? And if in the case of we've told it we want it expanded, if it is not expanded, so it's collapsed, then we expand it. Otherwise, we don't have anything to do. And similarly, in the case where we told it to collapse, we check, is it expanded? If it is expanded, then we're going to minimize it. Otherwise, there's nothing to do. It's already collapsed. So once again, very simple, short code. And if we just push this again over here and we run it, you'll see by default, the B expand is true. So we don't even need to put any value here. We can just run it and it will expand. If we put the false, it will collapse. And you could also put here, if you wanted the true, it will do the exact same thing. It will expand it. So that is the extent of using the function in access. You can, you know, use these commands on buttons, on forms if you want. You can part, make it part of your code that executes when you're doing different things to give more room to the MIDI clients and the users have more uh, usable area for working. Uh, the choice is yours. It's very flexible and completely accessible in, like I said, forms, etc., or through VBA. Now let's turn our attention for a second to Excel. So I created a very simple uh, workbook. Let's go into the VBA just so you can quickly see it. And as you're going to see here, exactly the same thing, not a single change here. So I have my self healing and I have my helper function. And then if you come in here in the ribbon tabs, you've got the two functions. Now, I said there was one line that changed, depending if you're in Access, Word, Excel, whatever the case may be. 
And that line is in the is expanded function. And it's this guy here. Now you remember in access, I said we bound to access and we could search and work with the elements in access. Well, we do that by using the uh, Windows native handle of access. And we're lucky in access, we have a, the command right here that we're able to use to retrieve the handle of the instance we're in. In Excel, the command is slightly different. It's this one. So we just have to comment or uncomment the appropriate line. And I also put the line here for Word, but it just changes depending which your application you're in. For some reason, um, Microsoft didn't standardize this command in all their applications. It's a minor thing, one line, comment, uncomment, and then it will be fully functional. So if we just quickly push this to the right and the left, and we can test out the same function as before and is exp is expanded true if we minimize it for a sec and then we run it it's false similarly we can take the expand and we can run that uh, with no we don't need to put the input argument if we don't want to it expands if we do the false to minimize it, it minimizes. If we do the true, it expands. And lastly, just to demonstrate, like I said, you can then use this in buttons or whatever you like. And that's what I've done here. I probably should have shown you, but I just created a simple macro that calls the UA expand false or expand. That's all it is behind those two buttons, a single line. And now, you can play with your ribbon to your heart's content. And that's as complicated as it gets. So I hope this uh, helps understand a little bit more of UI automation. I am going to make another video where we're going to push things a little further and being able to invoke specific commands on the ribbon. I think that's where a lot of people want to end up. I have a couple examples I know I've already done in Access how you can compact and repair, whether it be on the ribbon itself in database tools or through the file on the backstage uh, that I've already worked out completely. I want to do a couple other examples. I'm hoping to make the function more flexible, um, but that'll come at a later date. I hope you found the, the video informative. I hope you've learned something new. If you wouldn't mind leaving me some comments below, uh, have you ever used UI automation before? Uh, what have you used it for? Um, and if not, were you even aware of the UI automation library, or is this something new? Um, I'd love to get a little bit of an idea of where we situate ourselves on this, and if you're finding this useful, informative. As always, I appreciate it if you're able to like and subscribe, or if you're able to promote any of these videos or channels, uh, be greatly appreciated, as always. And thank you very much for taking time out of your busy day to watch the video. Thank you, and we'll see you in the next video.